it's me Lo here and I'm back with another video. I would love to show you how to draw afro hair. This is like the way to draw afro hair for me. It takes out the stress, it takes out the frustration and it makes it more fun. So that amount of time it used to take me to draw afro hair, drawing it bit by bit by bit, all in pencil. Now by using soft pastel I've found a much simpler way and I've been working this way for a long time now. I can actually guarantee you by watching this video, you are gonna be able to draw afro hair. I know that sounds a bit like, is she serious? But I know this because when I did my first curly hair video, since the day I put that on YouTube, I've received so many images of people's work from recreating that image. And some of them are just like, I didn't even know I could draw afro hair. So I'm gonna put more emphasis on that today and just show you in a bit more detail how I would create this afro hair texture. I'm gonna have the fade in there because I love a good fade. One thing about a barber is we kind of forget that they're artists. So when you see certain fades, it's something that I'm into. If you open up my Instagram, you're just gonna see loads of fades, 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 fades. <laughs> um, I just think it's a form of art, what a barber can do with somebody's hair. I also cut my son's hair and whatnot. So I kind of grew up in a barber shop, so I can appreciate the skill that goes into cutting a really, really good fade. I'm actually gonna do two videos, so I'm not sure what the second one's gonna be, but it's gonna be some black hairstyle or black hair type. Now I'm seeing those views, and look through all my videos, the views on the hair videos are the highest, and hair for me is something that actually stopped me drawing a long time ago, so if I can show anybody out there that's just borderline fed up with drawing just because they draw the face, they draw everything else, and they're getting better at that, but when it comes to hair, they're just avoiding it. We really do have to face our fears with art. If you really want to excel and become really good at realism art, you have to draw the things that you don't like to draw, if it's included in what it is that you like to draw. Like with people, I used to avoid drawing hair and therefore drawing hair was the thing I found most difficult. And I found that I was drawing a lot of bull people. <laughs> but with you guys, I just think, I mean, if you're into drawing cars, you know, but there's certain parts of it, you can't, you know, you can't get right. Then draw it, draw it, draw it, draw it, draw it. Draw it all the time. This is the trick, guys. There's no secret to drawing. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna get started. I'm actually gonna grid this picture. The reason I'm gridding it is for my Patreon. I like to put it up there with the measurements so people can follow along. I'm also gonna draw the face, but like that, I'm gonna be back with the hair for you guys. So let's start out with the list of tools that we're gonna need for this portrait. Make sure you have all of these. They're all the things I use in this portrait. And here is the reference if you would like to screenshot now. So here's the before and after, and let's get started. Laying down some soft pastel. Bear in mind, this is extra soft pastel. I've listed in those lists of things to buy. Uh, make sure you have all of those tools. I don't know if another pastel will work the same. So I'm starting down by just circular motions, laying down one layer of the Sennelier Black Extra Soft Pastel. I absolutely love this pastel, it works wonders. It's the only pastel that I use when I'm creating black hairstyles and textures. With very, very delicate motions, you're trying to basically massage the pastel into the paper, but keep in mind the different tones of black, gray, and almost white. I want you to really keep looking back at your reference picture and make sure that you're paying the most attention to the darker areas. Once you get all of this laid down, notice that at the top there, even though it's sped up a bit, I did make sure I did it a bit softer to give that kind of frizzy, soft, afro kind of effect at the top. We'll go in with more detail later. And here I go with my trusted vacuum cleaner. I've had people debate in the comments about what it is that I'm using. Clearly a vacuum cleaner right there, just for any confusion. Vacuum it from the center of the hair. Okay, so we're jumping back in with the extra soft pastel. Um, notice that at the front here, there is that is the darkest part of the whole of the hair. And paying attention to that area first, I really want to give it that dark, dark effect. You can be quite free with it. I've sped it up here, but you can be quite free with where you're putting the pastel. Just notice that I am quite discreetly paying attention to all the darkest areas. There, there's two darkest areas you can see that I've pointed out there for you. And then there's the darkest area at the back as it fades out into that soft Afro texture. Now right here, there's a slight pale gap. I want you to pay attention to that. 
So even though this is sped up, feel free to pause it at any time. I am just massaging it and it did take quite a while. So um, also I want to tell you guys, don't rush while you're doing this. There is no rush. Make sure at this point you turn your cotton bud over so that it's, a, it's to get a lighter effect. So don't use the part of the cotton bud that has the darkest pastel on it. When you're going up to the top, make sure you keep the pressure very soft and we really want to give that soft effect around the outside because looking at the reference picture, the top of the hair is very soft. We'll add the curl detail later. Don't worry about that right now. So here we have the base laid down and I'm going to start to go in with the detail with this Mono Zero eraser. It's not a pen guys, it is an eraser. And make sure you sharpen it across some soft sandpaper. I have sellotaped some down to my desk. So let's start with the detail. Now I've edited this image just to show you the most highlighted areas. It's where the light source is hitting the hair. I'm going to start by laying down what I think is the most prominent highlighted area. Now bear in mind that I'm going in circular motions at all time here. When drawing curly hair, afro hair, I know a lot of people just scribble down lots of curls and it doesn't always look very realistic but while working with the pastel and the eraser I always go in circular motions just because afro hair is so textured every single individual tight curl so in the end it will have a better effect and make it look more realistic so while you're working across the surface with the eraser please pay attention to making sure you stick to circular or li little curved motions. And once again here, jumping in with the cotton bud. Now what I'm trying to do here is blend in the, the erased areas, make them look a little bit more soft. The way I work is always in layers. Now you could avoid this part and you could just leave them as they were, but again, I work in layers. I do it over and over and over again until I get the right effect and the hair becomes more and more realistic. So I'm gonna show you guys my way. Now maybe you can't see in the reference picture right here, but I actually had it zoomed in on my um, laptop in front of me on my desk. So I could see that there were quite a lot of little light gray and white highlighted little lines and little, little details. Now it's the tiny detail you need to pay attention to. At the front there, I'm highlighting it a little bit too much, but once again, after I will go over it with my brush. You're going to notice that I've sped up lots of parts of this tutorial but that is because the whole drawing took me four hours and something and I needed to get it down to less than an hour so I didn't want to cut out any parts so please pay attention to what I'm doing here. Um, hopefully you can see in enough detail and pause it at any point if you would like to catch up with where I've got to at this point and then we can go from there. As you can see here, I'm making sure that little highlighted area is being highlighted and I'm gonna leave it there all the way through this portrait. I may darken the area around it. And even up there, you can see that I'm actually working out um, quite freely here. It's kind of making the hair look a little bit scaly, um, as if you were doing scales across skin. Just making sure you add that texture and don't forget the highlighted areas there. Pay attention to them. Make them more prominent if you need to. Don't feel any way to go over them. Um, if you see any of the highlight curving in a different way, please do add that. If you don't like it or you do it wrong, it can be fixed. You don't have to worry at any point through this portrait. Everything you do can be fixed. That's the most important thing here. Working with this black pastel is absolutely amazing. So as you can see, I keep turning around the Mono as Zero eraser because um, I have to sharpen it quite a lot while I'm doing this. So I turn it around for a sharper edge and that kind of makes some of the little white uh, curves that I put in there more dominant than the others, which makes it more textured, which is what you want. So be quite free with this part, guys. Now, as you see, everything's going pretty fast, but I promise you guys by the end of this, this portrait is going to look like realistic afro hair. Just follow the steps. Again, I'm highlighting the actual highlighted areas. You feel free to work at your own pace and we'll get there in the end, I promise you. Now you can't really see up here, but I am really trying to lighten the outside area. So I'm using very soft um, brushes with the eraser just to um, make it look more soft on the outside, more see-through. Making it see-through is what makes it more soft. 
keep in mind that beautiful texture of afro hair you really want to recreate that here you don't just want to make it look like a puff you really want to give it that texture the real life texture of afro hair now you can see there's a light source hitting the back of the hair that's why i'm going over this part here that part there is probably the only part that i went over with straight lines Once again, following the reference picture, guys. Keep looking at that reference. You will be following what I'm doing, but you'll also be going your own way with this. You could be drawing a completely different picture, so be free with it. Afro hair is, to me, one of the easier types of hair to draw. Um, it's a much different technique to drawing straight hair or wavy hair. But again, um, once you, it's, it's very uncontrollable it goes in its own direction so all you really have to focus on is the light source and the darker areas that's how you give depth and um, really get the soft texture of the outside of the afro so i'm going to pull it out now just so you can see more of the hair i'm just texturing it there nothing new takes quite a time quite some time people so be patient i actually enjoyed this this process but i'm gonna have to pull it out for you because i want to see the whole the whole area here we go so once again we're getting the cotton bud out now i'm gonna go over just the parts of the hair it's all about softening you don't want afro hair to look too sharp you don't want all the edges to be sharp it does look blurred out in certain areas so paying attention to that and using the cotton bud just to find those areas and blow it through again i'm going to remind you you cannot make a mistake you can only do something and get the eraser out and have to fix it again. It's no problem. Do not worry about doing something that you're going to regret later. You can fix it. That's why I love drawing Afro hair. That's why I'm so comfortable with the process because there's nothing to fear. So this is the part I enjoy. And those nails are done by Cinder Funkinrella. I'm um, underscore nails. I'm going to put her name up on the screen now. Be sure to go and follow on IG, guys. She is an amazing nail technician. I travel 30 to 40 miles to go and see her. She's amazing. So now what we're going to do is pay attention to the darkest areas. This is the part I enjoy the most, guys, because this is when things start to come to life. Once we start adding that depth. Now, bear in mind that certain parts of the hair are, are going further in than others. And certain parts give the illusion of being further in than others because they're darker. So I want you to really pay attention to the different tones that you lay down. Now, here you can see I'm laying down just some, you know, fairly dark little lines and little scratches and I'm kind of making those little lines more dominant so I tend to go around them a little bit but at the bottom here I'm gonna start adding more more pressure more depth more um, more of the pastel it's very important now first of all I'm gonna go over it just kind of defining little bits at this point I was feeling my way through the portrait um, again you can't make a mistake so I was not nervous I was not scared I was just comfortably going through it with some um, pencil strokes and really highlighting some of those little waved um, white highlighted areas but you'll see that in certain areas I'll start to add more pressure now look at the way that the portrait is changing this is what you want to do when you're creating realism you really want to look at the reference picture and look at it can be confusing sometimes you look back at the reference image and you get a little bit lost but I, I find that over time with me drawing more often, I do, I have overcome that. I have, um, I still get lost sometimes and have to really stare at the image, the reference image, but it's okay, that happens, um, you know, but like I say, there's a lot of effort that goes into this, but if you want to create realism, then you're, you're not a stranger to effort. I know that that's one thing <laughs> I can spend for, I could have done this in 20 minutes, but I made sure that I spent four hours over the whole process. Now at the back there, you can see there's quite a dark area. Now I don't know why, I think I need to rearrange my lighting because right now we're not able to see the way, the image the way I would love to see it. Um, I think my lighting that's on the right side of my table uh, needs to be brought over to the left, I think. Uh, maybe I just need to buy more lighting. But uh, that's my job, I'll look at that later. Let's get back to the drawing. Um, so as you can see, being very free, once again, I'm just... Um, 
laying down little dots, little circular parts here, little lines there. It's all about accentuating the highlighted areas. It really is not about laying down the black at the top there. It's about really kind of, you know, um, sharpening up those, those highlighted areas, giving them more definition. I do apologize that I had to fast forward a lot of this portrait, but again, that's four hours. I did not want you to miss one stage. So every part of the portrait is in this video. So at the back there, where I'd highlighted those areas, I really wanted to kind of blur it out slightly. I will go over it again with the eraser at some point. But after laying down the black pastel pencil, you can see the black pastel pencil gives more of a sharp look. And that's something that I don't want. So even though it was needed to give detail, once again, we're going to go over it with the cotton budge. And we're going to blur it out a little bit. Just, just kind of smudge it in so it doesn't look like pencil strokes. We want this to look like hair. Again, being very careful around the outside there, you can see that I'm using a different part of the cotton bud just to make sure it's a lighter area and not laid down too dark. And once again, like I said, jumping in with the Mono Zero eraser. You can purchase these on Amazon, make sure you buy plenty of refills. They're really not expensive. I think in England I paid probably about £5 online with, uh, actually I probably ordered it from America, but um, now I buy my refills on Amazon, so I don't know, I'm in the UK, so I don't know where it's best for you to order it, but just do a little Google search and you'll be able to find the Mono Zero eraser by the brand name Tombow. I have people in the comments asking me, what is that white pen that you're using? And um, it's probably my most asked question and uh, I would advise you if you're looking at my comments, um, you will see the answer is there repeatedly. So. I answer that question a lot. If you just scroll down into the comments, if you've got any questions here, you might see that they've been answered already. So we're covering the whole surface again. I'm making sure that I've got those most highlighted areas. And even though the bottom half does look too highlighted, again, I will go over it with the cotton bud. Here comes that cotton bud. Now, all I'm doing is trying to give that detail at the bottom there. I will go over it with a brush and a cotton bud after to darken that area. So the top highlighted areas are going to stay very highlighted. Do not worry about that. And don't allow your eyes to get lost. Keep your eyes and your concentration on where you are working on, on the pit, on the drawing and looking up at the reference image. Con really concentrate on the, the areas that you're working on. That's the most hardest thing probably about drawing Afro here. It's, um, it's hard to keep um, your eyes on the right area of the reference picture, but we can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. I really do want to teach you guys. Um, I've, I've gone into a lot more effort with this video, with the editing and whatnot. Um, but if there's anything you would like me to do or anything you'd like me to answer, please do put it in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video. First of all, if I don't get plenty of likes, maybe I won't answer your questions. <laughs> Just give me a like on this video if you've enjoyed it so far or if you found it useful in any way, do give me a like. But make sure if you have any questions, put it in the comments. I have the app and I will answer every single question I get. So once again, now you can see I've sharpened that Mono Zero eraser across the sandpaper and I'm really kind of paying a little bit more de more attention to the detail here. I want to highlight specific little lines that I would like to show up at the end of this portrait. So um, the odd straight line here, uh, you really need to pay attention to the reference here. There are little highlighted parts that are lighter than the areas surrounding it. So this is what I'm doing at this point here. So even though this is very fast, you should be able to watch it and see what I'm doing here. If you have any problems with your portrait or um, you don't feel as though it looks like Afro hair um, or it doesn't look like the drawing that I did, then please do uh, contact me by email artistmarilo at yahoo.com. I'll be happy to answer your questions or even just to look at your, your drawing that you've done so far if you send me an image and I'll be able to advise you on what you need to do to correct certain things but um, maybe you're drawing a different picture or whatnot but 
If so, then you're going to need to send me the reference picture too. Now you can see that I'm just going over the highlighted areas. The whole process is really just going over and over and over the portrait. Maybe that's just the way that I work. Everybody works in different ways, but this is the way that I create this type of afro hair and this texture. I really wanted to go over it and over it and over it. Now with the brush, you're going to see that I'm, the aim here is to darken all of the areas that I've um, highlighted at the bottom there, not all of them actually, sections of them. And again, I'm looking back at the reference. You can see where I've brushed across certain areas. You can see the little lines underneath and it gives the illusion that they go into the background. That is what I'm trying to do by doing layers and layers and layers. So um, don't forget to follow me on IG, guys. Um, I do post there every now and then. But don't forget, if you would like more in-depth tutorials, please do follow me um, or go and join me on Patreon. The link is, at, is at, in the description underneath this video. I've just started Patreon, really. I have quite a few people on there. And um, yeah, I'm enjoying the process. I'm enjoying making more in-depth videos for you guys. So a lot of people don't really know I'm on, on Patreon. If you would like more in-depth detail videos, then please do join me on Patreon. Now this is my favourite bit. This is like coming to the end now. I'm going to concentrate more on the darkened areas. I already highlighted those areas and I'm going over them again with that black pastel pencil. But you're going to see after this, again, I'm going to blend in that black pastel pencil and it's going to give that effect again to brush across some of the highlighted areas. So it's all about layers, guys. I can't stress that enough. Like I said, you can't make a mistake. If so, you will go over it with the highlight, uh, with the eraser for the highlight, or you'll go over it with the pencil, or you'll go over it with uh, the cotton bud that has the pastel on it. You can darken any area. If you wanted to, you could go all the way over this with black pastel and start from scratch. So do not worry about making mistakes. The pressure's off here. Every now and then while I'm doing this, I'll look back at the reference picture and I'll be like, okay, that area looks too light on my drawing. I'll put the reference picture, it looks darker. So that's when I pull out the brush like I have here and I start to smudge in the black pastel pencil and paying attention to the darkest areas on the reference picture. Unfortunately, the reference picture looks a little bit different here to what it did when I was zoomed in on it on my laptop. Looking at it now on the screen, I could probably uh, create it a lot easier by just laying down a lot more black, but um, when I zoomed in on it, I could see more details. So that was what I was trying to recreate. And once again, we're going over it with a black pencil. Like I said, a lot of this is repeated actions. I don't want to cut out any part of this drawing because I could have just showed you once and then skip through and showed you again towards the end. But I really wanted to show you every single stage, even if I had to speed many hours of drawing up. I hope you're able to follow. I hope you're able to kind of watch the process and um, and follow what I've done here. Now you can pause it at this point and go back and work more on the hair if you would like to. Maybe you got the texture of the hair down way before I did. In that case, let's move forward to the fade. This is my favorite part. It actually um, was a little bit more complicated than I thought. I tried to go in with a black polychromous pencil. Only to find out later that it really wasn't 100% necessary, but it was okay. It still helped with the effect. So here I've basically got some graphite powder on my brush. And again, you can see everything I'm doing, I'm massaging in circular motions. Anytime you see me going straight, it's just to lay down the graphite powder softly. I don't like to leave any dominant marks. So I'm very careful with the way I lay it down, but I'm really just massaging it over the areas that I want to darken. I don't want any part of this to be too dark. Here is the kneaded eraser and here is the mono zero eraser. Always pay attention to those highlighted areas even if I have to go back to the year or whatnot. Um, obviously this is a hair tutorial so I don't need to say that. <laughs> but maybe you have followed me on, port on Patreon and you've seen the whole of the face drawing and you're continuing from there. Who knows? Please do join me on Patreon. I'd love to see you over there. This here is like a, a 2H pencil that I was laying down some skin tone there with. There was a slight shadow behind the ear. I 
Now you don't have to use a pencil for this part. You can use um, maybe a, a blended um, blending stamp with some pastel on it. That would be fine. Just make sure you're careful with the amount of pressure that you lay down. Please ignore where I'm correcting the ear. That was just to kind of join the drawing to the hairline. All of this really was a bald fade uh, round by the ear. That was just the very faint line you get from the little dots of hair underneath the skin. This was obviously a fresh cut that I just had in the reference picture. Now using the brush to lay down, uh, kind of if you'll notice I'm, I'm smudging the brush against the actual pastel that I've drawn a little bit higher up. And here is the blending stump. Like I told you before, uh, just grab a little bit of pastel from the drawing onto this blending stump and you'll be able to lay down very discreet little faint lines but pay attention to the direction that the lines are going in with the fade. But as we join the hair to the skin, we're gonna just kind of put patches of uh, pastel. Pay attention to the obviously the reference image but it doesn't have to be fully exact. Just make sure you're kind of following the same pattern and um, as you can see already, we've kind of found an in-between now. And then at the bottom, I'm gonna lay down a little bit of graph a little bit of uh, pastel. And you can see it's already beginning to join to the skin. Here I am working down again. I think because I decided that later on I could dab the lower skin with a eraser. Just to get the little white dots um, and whatnot from the skin where the bald fade is. Again, just covering the whole surface. I'm being careful here, making sure to blend in. Uh, once again, I'm darkening areas. This is like, a just uh, it's like a dog chasing its tail. You're just going over and over and over and over the same thing, but um, you're gonna get the right result in the end. So just darkening certain areas in the hair and then blending it down slightly, following the pattern of the darkest areas that are going down towards into the fade. As you go down, make sure you use very, very light pressure. You want to smudge it afterwards, but you're going to want to have it blend into the skin. Um, so make sure you use a lot less pressure here. You can see I'm starting to do it very softly. I don't know why, but I'm starting to speak softer as I'm putting less pressure onto the paper. Let me just start talking normally. It's like whispering when you don't need to. <laughs> I really don't need to be talking softly right now. But, um, yeah again sped up but i had to get this video on here for you and i'm hoping that you guys can follow the sped up process go by the reference image when creating realism you're always going by the reference image just very delicate strokes notice the strokes are going forwards uh, towards the face i made sure that i did them in the direction that the hair is actually going because later on we're going to add more detail, more highlight, and we want the head to be going in the right direction. Don't be tempted to do it going straight down. Um, you have to kind of, you have to think ahead with these things. You have to make sure you're doing things in the right direction. So you have to add less uh, detail later when you're using the eraser. So the strokes of the um, pencil will kind of do the work for you. And here I am blending them in with the blending stump. You're going to see that fade really kind of come to life here. There we go, it's starting to look like it's fading out from the darker area above, going down to where there was curls on the top and then it fades down to little bits of hair and then we're gonna create the gaps here at the bottom after, but using the brush just to blend it in. I absolutely love the process, is it just me? I think I used to suffer through the process but now I really do enjoy it. So I don't know what stage you are at drawing but if, if you're suffering right now, I feel you, I, I used to feel the same but it, 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 it eventually it will, go from pain to joy don't worry just stick at it if you love art you love art there's nothing you can do about it. you're gonna have to just suffer all the way through learning all of the little bits until you get to that point where it's just second nature you can do it with your eyes closed and I don't know why I just said that because I couldn't do nothing with my eyes closed I can't even draw without a reference picture just putting that out there maybe I'll do a video showing how my reload draws things from imagination I almost have no imagination because I am an artist that works from a reference image. I get people ask me a lot, oh, can you draw this, can you draw that? I say, give me a photo and I can draw anything. <laughs> I'll draw you a slice of toast if I can take a picture of a slice of toast. 
that's the way I work. If you're an artist that actually works from memory, um, then you'll probably be paying more attention to light source and whatnot here. But again, I'm I'm highlighting here, but you can see the highlight is actually lighter than the skin tone, so I will go over it after with the brush. Um, but it is going to help with the effect of the strokes of hair and the, the direction it's going in and where the hair kind of blends down to the bald part of the skin. Anything that you're using, any tool that you're using, when you're using an eraser, draw with the eraser. When you're using a blending stump, draw with the blending stump. Everything is a drawing tool. I don't think of it as though, right, I'm going to rub out this area, I'm erasing bits. No. I'm drawing the highlighted areas with the eraser. When I get the blending stump out, I'm drawing uh, parts with the blending stump. Even here, I'm drawing with the uh, kneaded eraser. Again, I'm just highlighting certain areas, but you know, you'll see that I'm manipulating the end of it and changing the shape of it because I really want to get certain parts up in a bunch without touching any other parts. There are clumps of hair right here. I think at some point here I got out my polychromos pen, pencil. Um, it did help a little bit, but I um, gave up pretty quick because I wanted to go back to the pastel pencil. But we're definitely coming towards the end now. This is my clutch pencil. It's got a 6H lead. And if you look really closely, you can see that I'm just doing little little circular dots um, close together to give the illusion of skin. And the smaller you do them and the more darker you do them, the more it will look like little hair where the hair's been cut off with the um, cut throat razor or whatnot with the barber used. So you'll see um, that it will begin to look like shaved off hair. And then as you go higher, you do strokes and you're going to see that it kind of gives the illusion that it's going from a bald fade, going up to little tiny bits of hair and then up to the big chunks of hair before it goes into the curly part on top. Now I'm paying more attention to their direction and I'm doing, um, I'm shading areas so that you can see chunks um, because you can see there are more chunks right in the middle. There are more chunks of hair pushing forward. So I was trying to get that effect there. Here we go with some more dots, more, some more skin. Just look at the reference and you'll see. Just follow whatever it is that you see. Don't worry if you darken an area too much, you can flatten your needle eraser. I tend to push it against the table, flatten it a little bit, and then um, just delicately lift up the graphite or the, the pencil on the, the surface of the drawing where you want to lighten it, and then start again with the drawing process. Like I said, there are no mistakes. If you make a mistake, you can fix it. Just make sure you use light pressure. And at this point, I was really trying to be careful. I'm going to add detail here, but very carefully. I didn't want to overdo the black pastel pencil. It looks so different when it's sped up, but you can see before that was the real speed. I tried to show you the real speed before I speed things up just to give you an idea of how slow I'm working. And here I go, paying attention to more chunks and more chunks of hair here and there. I'm going to blend that in again afterwards, so it really is gonna um, help with the effect of the fade. very delicately at the bottom there. You can see I'm barely touching the paper. I found that that takes quite a while to um, kind of perfect that. I used to find it hard to put a small amount of pressure on straight away until I've been drawing for a few hours. But now I've, I've kind of learned how to, um, how much pressure to put down on the paper. But that for me was, um, was something that took me a year or so to learn. But I'm being very delicate where I'm laying down that graphite. And I'm also turning the pencil as well to a flatter area so that it's more of a smudged effect um, and it covers more of an area. And here we go with the trusted brush. This is going to really help with the faded um, effect. 
like I say, I don't ever like to leave that black pe pe um, pencil laid down too heavy. I just like to smudge certain areas. So it gives that kind of sharp look as well as that blended look. You don't want it all to look sharp. It will take away from the realism in my opinion. Again with that blending stump. Just smudging it in and laying down, making sure the fade uh, looks correct, making sure it's, you can always smudge more uh, pastel lower down if you need to. But just adding little smudges here and there, it helps with the effect of the fade. Just to remind you, I'm never 100% happy with the effect, never. Um, I have to kind of take my eyes out from the picture and look at it and I sometimes I'll see where I need to correct it. Sometimes I'll be unhappy with it until I kind of look at the whole picture and it, it, the whole drawing in all. And then when I can see, rather than just one section, when I can see the whole of the area, um, and you just know when it's finished. Some people say artwork is never finished. I'm not one that believes that, I think. Sometimes I'll look at a picture and just be like, there's nothing more to do. Um, but if I see any mistakes, I will keep going in. I keep doing the same thing over and over. So I do tend to know when it's finished. If I look at a picture, I say, right, if I do anything else, I'm just going to be repeating the same thing to get the same effect or I'm going to overdo it. Um, so trust yourself, trust your instinct. You should know when a portrait is finished. If you don't, then leave it for the night. Wait until the next day, have a look and you'll know. Now using the eraser just to highlight areas again, being very, very careful. We're getting to the end of the drawing now. So um, I'm being very, very careful. I'm not just going in as though I'm going to correct it after. I'm trying to really get those defined little line strokes as though it's, um, you know, shiny hair blended into the skin there. We're getting to that point where we don't want to correct things. We want things to be kind of finalised and finished. I would love for you guys to send me your drawings. Um, please do email me, artistmarilo at yahoo.com. Um, I'd be happy to see them. If not, you can put it on your Instagram and tag me in it. Um, if you do that, I will make sure I have a look and I'll come over there and comment. I, I've had people do that before and I love to see people recreate what I've drawn for them in a the video. Again, if there's anything else I can advise you with, if there's any, any advice I can give you that I haven't put in this video, please do um, let me know in the comments or email me or contact me on Instagram. Um, I'm always open to the people that watch my videos. I'm always here for you guys. So if I can help you in any way, I will. And this is the dab effect. I love dabbing on the paper. That is how we create pores. That is how we create so many different effects. So here you can see I'm being, look, even sped up, it's slowed down. It's like, you can see that I'm really trying to be careful here. I'm trying to get those skin parts in there. Go in the right direction. Look at the direction of the white streaks that you're trying to recreate. Um, I don't want to say they're highlights. Even though you're highlighting the area, it's actually the skin now that you're drawing. So you're trying to make the part that you've already drawn look like hair strokes by putting a highlight in between them. I'm actually starting to see it come together now. To me, it's starting to look like a fade. I was very happy with the drawing when I was finished. And I hope you will be too. Again, you can use this technique with any kind of drawing of any um, type of Afro hair or any photo that you're trying to draw or recreate. Um, if it's this kind of Afro hair texture, you can use this approach. If it's more uh, looser curls or whatnot, then or um, big softer curls, I do have other curly hair videos that you could follow the technique or get ideas from the techniques that I've used there. But um, with this texture here, I find this is the best effect. Now, this is the black polychromos pencil that I'm using here. I just did, you know, very slight things here and there with the black polychromos pencil. I didn't do it for too long because I was quite happy with the effect it gave me. I wouldn't use that all over the drawing because by using pastel you get a more matte effect while using um, the black polychromos pencil it's going to give a little bit more shine when you look at the drawing from an angle. So I went over it with the blending stamp to try and avoid that shine. Shine is like the enemy when it comes to drawing. I tend to not use um, too high in the B grades. Um, 
just because it creates too much shine so I tend to use black polychromos pencil to blend with pencil and the black pastel pencil to blend with pastel and now I'm using the clutch pencil that's a 6H lead there I find it stays more solid there's no sharpening with the um, well I do sharpen it but I just rub it on some sandpaper but um, yeah it's very little sharpening need to be done so I was just getting the hair strokes there blending them into the skin adding a few little patches, um, just little circles together, just do little circles or long cut, long circles, just, just kind of um, squeeze them together so there's a little gap in between and it will give that kind of pore effect. Yeah, I'm happy with this drawing. I can't see much more needs to be done now. Just finishing touches, just a few pores here and there. Always chasing that realism. There was a slight white line there um, at the edge, so I made sure I kept that in there. I used an eraser to create that. I really enjoyed the process of this drawing. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I really hope that it's helped you draw curly hair. I'm 100% sure that it will work. Um, if you have any qualms with that, please do put it in the comments or contact me. Um, the aim here is to teach guys. If there's anything that I've missed, I'm, um, I'm happy to look at that and correct it. But I'd like to think I've given you enough information here just to go over and not to be intimidated by drawing Afro hair. It's not as hard as it seems, it's just different techniques that we need to use to create a different type of texture, that's all. So just highlighting some areas here. And finishing touches. Don't forget to sign your work guys. I sign every single portrait I've ever done. My mama told me that when I was a kid. So here it was before I drew the hair. And here is the final result. I hope that you guys have had fun during the process of this drawing and please do contact me and send me your drawings. I would love to see you recreating Afro hair drawing. And thank you for watching.